week two episode two of whiskey wednesdays last week i didn't really do an intro and then i didn't know where to cut the bond so this week we're going to do it properly and uh hopefully continue to do it properly from there last week uh was santori yamazaki and hibiki so if you're interested in that go take a look at that one otherwise this week we are taking a look at lime burners it's an australian whiskey um, I'm never a hundred percent sure whether the distillery is called Lime Burners because, uh, like, they sort of promote the distillery as the Great Southern Distilling Co. I think maybe that's like the overarching name of the company is the Great Southern Distilling Co. And then Lime Burners is a particular distillery that they own in WA. And I think they actually have three distilleries under that Great Southern Distilling Co. Uh, name. I think one's gin. One is the, the Lime Burners product that we've got here. Um, and one is, I think they only just started it up. I believe it's called Tiger Snake. And we can take a look at that later. Um, the Tiger Snake, I believe it's whiskey with an E-Y. Uh, because it's grain whiskey instead of malt whiskey. Came from your boss who was Irish fishy D. All right, that makes sense. Writer's tears, it makes sense as a thing, right? If you're, if you're a writer, maybe you drink a lot of whiskey in between the, the writing of your of your things. Um, yeah, anyway. All right, let's let's uh, let's have a chat about Lime Burners. So, yeah, Lime Burners is uh, Aussie whiskey. It's from, uh, it's from, from WA. Um, if you order from them directly, I feel like it takes a long time to get here. I know I baited MJ into buying uh, some Darkest Winter. And to be honest, that's how I got into Lime Burners. It was the first uh, Aussie whiskey that I bought. I was uh, looking for, you know, I'd gone through and I'd gone through buying a lot of Japanese whiskey. And I'd realized, hey, this is, uh, this is really hard to get. This is really expensive. Uh, you know, if I'm going to buy it, buying it in Australia is probably the worst way to buy this whiskey. Uh, so if I am going to buy Japanese whiskey, maybe I should buy it in Japan, uh, which I ended up doing, but then, you know, I can only do that when I'm there, which at this point has been like one time a year, and, you know, the world's ending now, so that makes things even worse. So I was like, right, let's uh, let's go and find an Aussie whiskey that I want to try. Um, and I don't know if you guys are across... The whiskey bible i mentioned it last week it's essentially you can see it like uh where the, how do i move my hand there on my uh, there there on my shelf it's essentially a, a a book that goes through and it lists out uh ratings and details about uh, thousands of different whiskies a lot of the ratings are from several years ago but each year he goes through and he tries a bunch of whiskey uh and adds them to the thing and then each year there's like a, a rating system like you know we, when you talk about such and such a whiskey got world's best whiskey got world's blah 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 whatever quite often it will be from the whiskey bible um so i bought a copy of that last year and uh as part of my research for that i saw that uh a couple of years ago um lime burners had one uh southern hemisphere best whiskey um, which, to be fair, is not that, uh, like, it's a nice thing to have, but if you go and look at all of the, the whiskey being made in the Southern Hemisphere, there's actually not that much. Australia probably making the vast majority of it. New Zealand does a little bit, but let's be real, uh, a lot of it's going to come from here. So, uh, Lime Burner's Darkest Winter had one. Uh, the best whiskey in the Southern Hemisphere. He'd awarded it. Uh, I don't know if it's in here. Uh, he's got some some name that he that he calls it that means it's uh, really really good. So I'll show you uh, some details on the on the darkest winter. So you can see this here. This is their current listing for this whiskey. Sixty nine point five percent, by the way, alcohol content. Uh, that's a very, that's a very strong whiskey. Best whiskey in the Southern Hemisphere, Jim Murray's Whiskey Bubble 2018. Best international craft, craft whiskey in the world. 
American Distillers Institute 2017, Best in Class San Francisco World Spirit Competition 2017, and then the Silver at the Australian Distilled Spirits Awards and Silver at the World Whiskey Awards. Now, uh, something we kind of chatted on last week, which we should probably reiterate, is that these uh, single cask whiskies, which is what this is, when they go and submit them for an award, uh, there might only be like 250 bottles from a cask. So if you go in and submit a single cask whiskey, once those 250 bottles are gone, even if you went and put like almost the exact same new make spirit or the exact same new make spirit into another uh, another barrel, it doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing. Oh, Pilski cast. Thanks for the follow. When we still drunk, Ben. Uh, yeah, see, MJ, we'll come to that in a sec. So that's a good point. Your darkest winner is 63%. The current one is 69.5%. Uh, Mike, when will we see drunk, Ben? We won't because I'm a responsible drinker, aka maybe at the end of the show. But I am slowly enjoying my highball to start the day. And the day, I mean, you know, 8 p.m. Um,. Yeah, so when they submit these, the one that wins may not be the same one that you get. And you can see, it will list what what it was, what barrel it was that, that won. Um, if you look here, they're currently selling barrel M488, uh, which might sound silly. But if I go and look at mine, this is barrel M485. So they're three, three barrels through. So 750 bottles through from when I bought mine. Mine is sitting at MJ 63.8%, um, which may or may not be the same as what you bought. Uh, but yeah, that's what I bought. So this is this is the same whiskey. This is the same whiskey as here, the one that I've got in my hand, but it's it's not necessarily. So uh, they make one every year. Um, and I went, I think I talked about this last week, where I went with the ESL boys to um, an event for this whiskey release last year at Mjolnir, uh, which is like that Viking-themed, Nordic-themed restaurant that do the big steaks and the whatever, and you go and you pick a giant knife. Um, but they also have a ton of whiskey, which is really cool. And we tried it, and you could compare uh, this one that I have with it. so this one's two years old you could compare it for the year before that and then last year's and they gave you like 30 mils of each and you could tell like distinct differences between the three they actually all tasted very different the peatiness was quite different uh fishy d says what's the effect on flavor with differing alcohol percentages uh obviously the the more alcohol like there's obviously that numbing factor to alcohol as well um you'll see a lot of these if you go and get a, a whiskey that's cask strength which these are so these are single cask cask strength uh, which are two separate things a single cask is obviously whiskey uh, from a single cask as opposed to most mainstream whiskies which are uh, vatted malts or essentially malts from the same distillery that are put together to keep a consistency of flavor a single cask whiskey is whiskey from one single cask and that might differ to the next single cask they literally go through and they pick the best ones that taste the best and uh they bottle it when that when they think it, it's at it at its peak essentially so um then cask strength means that they haven't added uh, any more water to it so it comes out at a percentage and that's how they bottle it so it's about it's it's it, single cask cask strength is a is essentially about as pure a whiskey as you can get there's nothing else done to it um you'll find that a lot of distilleries again when they're making you know like their more stock standard whiskey when they're blending uh, malts together to get that consistency and taste they'll also bring it down to a, a consistency in alcohol percentage because they believe that it tastes better at that point. Uh, for this, obviously, they have found that this one, this is it. it, it they prefer it at this at this uh, level. This is what it tastes like. 
Um, yeah, so it's a lot. You can add water to it. So quite often people will try a, a cask strength whiskey and, you know, you'll sniff it and you'll have a bit of a sip and you'll drink it and then you'll come through with your little, you'll see in like a, like a pipette thing and you'll get some purified water and you'll put it in and you'll swirl it around and sniff it again. Maybe it smells a little bit different because it's opened up. Um, you know, as you reduce the, the strength of the, the alcohol, it kind of opens it up and then you taste it and it tastes a little bit different. Though, uh, if I'm not wrong, like literally in the Whiskey Bible, when uh, Jim Murray put this in, he essentially said, do not add water to this whiskey. Uh, because there's like oils through the whiskey. Um, that he, anyway, it, you can drink it however you want, but that was his uh, two cents. Okay, MJ tweeted you my label. Let's, I'll have a look uh, at what you wrote uh, right now. Let's see what you've... 63.8% uh, bottle 190 of 230. Uh, can I do... Let's have a look if this works. Uh, yep. Be able to put this here and you guys should be able to see it here. Alright. Uh, line burners... Uh, Darkest Winter Barrel M485. It's the same as mine, M485. You have bottle 190. I have bottle 165. So uh, they got 230 bottles out of that. 230 bottles are out of one cask. Your question is, water and this whiskey in particular, I love the aroma of this one, but the drinking experience isn't as pleasant as, say... Uh, a Lagavulin 16 bottle siblings. I really like this whiskey, MJ. Um, and I like it without water. And I think you can just sort of sit there and drink it over like an hour. 30 mils over an hour. Gunny, good to see you. Wow, great article by the way, Gunny. I, I really liked it. I read half of it and I'll read the other half later. But cheers to you. Thank you for uh, Raise a Glass. Since I'm still not even through this yet, I will take a drink. So yeah, we're, we're looking at a few few different ones tonight. If we go back, we can take a look at Lime Burners uh, in general. And what these guys have going. Um, this is like an overview of what they're selling under the, the Lime Burners brand. So they do a, a single malt sherry cask, uh, 61%. Uh, they have a, an American oak at 43, a sherry cask at 43. So uh, you can see that this is like a, um, this should be cask strength. Um, which, look at that, 515 bucks a pop. This is not, not cheap whiskey. So, yeah, at car strength, it's 515. Um, and then when you go back, it's 144 bucks, uh, at this strength. But noting that this one is an award winner, and some of these are actually really expensive. They've got their heavily pitted whiskey that we'll look at in a, in a bit. Do I like Ballan Ballantines? Look, it's actually not that bad. And by not that bad, it's perfectly fine. Um, it's a little bit sweet for me, but it's uh, you can get it pretty cheap. You can get like what there's like an 18 year for a hundred bucks or something. I think the Ballantines 18 one best best um, blended whiskey 18 or over last year or something like that. Yeah, MJ. When you so when they dilute from cask strength, they're just diluting with water. So, um, quite often it's, uh, it's obviously to hit a point. I think there's differences in the, in the excise that you pay based on the alcohol percentage of the product as well. So maybe there's a factor there. Um, a lot of people don't want to drink more than like 43, 44% either. Um, yeah, a lot of them will have like, Hey, this is what we think. This is where our whiskey sits. This is, uh, the percentage that we like. Um, but you lose a lot of. I feel 
like the 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 real flavor like the oils and the like if you if you drink your darkest winter like you can it it like sits on your tongue right when you drink it even after you finished it like lingers for for a long time um and if you do that with something else it, it doesn't do that obviously like at a 40 percent or something like that um so there's definitely factors depending on the product but i very much like cast strength when they've picked it for um the right you know the right flavor because you'll note obviously that um as uh, you know when they put the new make spirit into a barrel the new make spirit should all be about uh, the same percentage of, of alcohol as it goes in. It's quite a low percentage. Um, and over time, as it matures, it kind of it goes up and up and up and up and up, whatever. Um, you lose alcohol, you lose water. Um, and then, you know, by the end, you've, you've got this thing that you, you want to drink, I suppose. Did the whiskey give you them whiskers? Uh, it does not give whiskers. If... Uh, if whiskey gave you whiskers, my beard would be uh, much better than it is now. Much better. But uh, unfortunately, it does not help. So, anyway, they do a sherry cask. They do an American oak cask. They do a port cask, uh, which is quite good. And then of those three, uh, I think they do uh, like a cask strength and uh, a standard 43% as well. Um... You can see that the cask strength uh, varies, often dependent on what it is. Um, there's the director's cut peated sherry cask. I haven't tried this. This looks actually fantastic. Um, won a ton of awards. This is, uh, yeah, so peated sherry cask. The one I've got is a musket cask. My director's cut, which is like, uh, they say it's their... Uh, best single cask. Um, I, I kind of go and pick the, the ones that they like the most um, and they release it as these uh, director's cuts. So uh, for me, yeah, the the one I bought, I'm a, I'm a big fan of. We can take a look at that in a bit. Um, what else they got in here? Yeah, here's, here's the kicker, right? So the, these are the, the real two. So uh, the Darkest Winter, which is uh, what... What you've got, MJ, what I've got, but this is a, a different one. 69, 69.5%. 69.5%. That's insane. Um, then there's this one. Single malt whiskey heavy peat. 61%. M221 is the barrel. This is $1,200. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You you could uh, put it on your hands uh, at that sixty nine percent, and it's gonna kill coronavirus very expensively. I would not recommend. Uh, so it says this batch of our heavy pit expression was recently awarded the highly prestigious title of best international craft whiskey and best international smoked whiskey by the globally accredited American Distilling Institute. Again, uh, sounds really good. I'm sure it's great, um, but there are so many whiskey awards, it's hard to keep up. This one seems like a pretty good one. Uh, and you can see here the the number of awards that this is won. Um, if anyone wants to send me one of these, I will open my Hibiki 17. That's enough to make me open it if you want to get me one of these, but I ain't paying 1,200 bucks uh, a pop or 700 mils of whiskey, as great as it looks. Um, I did, however, get a, an email from them today. Um, you you might have got one as well, MJ, because you did you buy from them or did you buy did you buy from them or did you buy from like Nix or something when you got your your bottle? Bought it direct, so you might have a an email as well today, like I got. Um, it essentially said, and I'll see if I can find it. Ah, oh, this is me. I 
Let's see if I can bring this up without ruining my stuff. Your exclusive invitation to Darkest Winter Events, Darkest Winter Day Returns. So this is what I went to last year with the boys. Uh, we went to Mjolnir, uh, noting that this year, again, the world has ended. Unfortunately, um, if you live in WA, you can go to their event. That's 180 bucks uh, a pop, which seems expensive, but it's not that bad. Uh, alternatively, online tasting, um, 150 bucks a pop. But they will send you uh, a sample of their new Darkest Winter, plus uh, a sample of that Heavy Peat Single Malt that was the $1,200 a bottle uh, one. And they will also send you a glass um, and their Peat and Port cast. There you go. So whether it's a good deal or not, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm tempted to get involved. Um, it looks really good. Plus, I want to try this uh, Heavy Peat uh, Single Malt. Pretty exciting. Anyway, so I'll see whether I get baited into that one or not. But uh, maybe you will get baited into that one, MJ, as well, if you do get the email. You got a Chris Ross Whiskey List email. Are you, uh, are you already uh, following Whiskey List? I am a master at baiting people into whiskey, though I haven't bought it myself yet. And the other problem, right, uh, is that the uh, whiskey club this month has two two Aussie whiskeys, like the 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 regular, the one that comes if you don't unsub, um, is the the Lark Distillery one. That's just for uh, you can only get as part of the whiskey club. Whether that's good or not, I don't know. Problem is you don't get to try it first, and then the, a Bakery Hill one as well, which I think, I think it's like one thirty for the line uh, for the lark, and then one ninety um, for the Bakery Hill, which is not cheap, and they'll both be five hundred mils, so that's the real kicker. Um, so I want both of those, but also I, I want to get the other one. So probably not going to achieve all of those this month, uh, but we'll have to wait and see. Anyway. This is almost done, so I can crack open my Darkest Winter in a second. I don't know if you can see, but how nice is this glass? This is like a Hibiki bottle. It's got all the the things around it like a Hibiki bottle does, all the little cuts. Anyway, uh, the only one, other one we haven't looked at yet is the Infinity Solera cask. So this is probably uh, one of the the cheaper bottles of lime burners, and you can get this from I think you can get it from Dan's. Uh, I've seen it at like um, the Liquorlands and things like this. So this is essentially uh, when it says in Infinity Solera car. So it's essentially a whiskey where they I don't think they ever fully like drain it. So they add whiskey in. They take whiskey out, um, but the the idea is that you're constantly putting whiskey into this uh, uh, into this system, and it, it almost always tastes the same. Is that right? Let me have a look. Uh, so this is like an eight year whiskey. I wonder if I can find out how they do it, because I'm not a hundred percent sure. Right, so 
essentially you put whiskey in and you kind of it you age it in more and more and more barrels and then you take from the bottom so it's it's almost like that you know never ending stew where you just keep adding stuff to it except obviously uh, a little bit more sciency than that you you just keep adding the, the the same type of new make spirit to the top and it over time ages through and you move it through um and then you get to the bottom yeah yeah exactly it, it's a cool idea fishy um this is this is definitely okay it is not as good as the other ones but it costs like a third the price so um it's a good way to get into lime burners um but some like what I would call like whiskey, uh, serious business elitists uh, uh, do not like it. So they discount all lime burners because they don't like this particular whiskey. When in actual fact, the other lime burners are very, very good. Anyway, so you can get that uh, from Dan's. I think they're like 120 to 140 a pop. Um, which is not bad for Aussie, Aussie whiskey because Aussie whiskey is expensive. Anyway, I'm going to try some of this one. So this is uh, the Darkest Winner. This is the same one that uh, MJ Carr has. Because that's my fault though because I did bait him into uh, into buying it. Uh, Errol M485. So I think this is from two years ago. They released one more last year. And then they released uh, one more this year as well, but the this year one um, has come out at almost 70%. The one thing I will say about these bottles, they have the benefit of not having a cork, they have a screw top, uh, but over time, if you don't open it for a while, the screw top actually gets really difficult to use. Uh, very very difficult to use and you can't almost impossible to get off same thing I find for the um, Sullivan's Cove. I think they use a very similar bottle type similar lid uh, If you're wondering why I just free port it, it's because this actually has lines in it in the glass So one is a, a line for 30 mils and then the line above it is if you were to add water to it uh, so thanks to uh the Suntory for that one because it's a cool idea. It's actually so strong. It's actually so incredibly strong. It's also uh, peaty, which is why it has that darkest winter name because it's supposed to have that smoky peaty um, feel to it. But it's a different peat, right? Why do you add water to tasting? You add water to tasting because. Uh, it frees up some of the flavors. So if you drink something at... Uh, you, you, So you wouldn't always necessarily add water to like a, a 40%. But even even like your Yamazaki and your Hakushu, things like that, uh, they'll still uh, suggest that, you know, the best the best percentage to, to taste that might be like 20 or 30% alcohol. So you're really just trying to... Uh, open up or, or, or remove like the the alcohol's impact on the flavor and bring it down to uh, an area where it doesn't overpower all of the aspects of the whiskey so uh, if you were to, like you went to a distillery tasting uh, at, a, at something like Suntory one of the, like at both Yamazaki and Akishu they'll give you one and you'll you know they'll get you to smell it they'll get you to taste it and then they'll be like, right, add some water to it. And they'll give you water and you add it to it. And then they get you to do it again. Um, and then you're just trying to find the different flavors in the whiskey that you wouldn't otherwise necessarily be able to taste um, if you hadn't put that in. So, yeah. Drink the whiskey, bro. I've been drinking whiskey all night. If you want to know what this tastes like, you don't need to listen to me. Because I'll just tell you it tastes great. This is a very good whiskey. Is that what you wanted to know? And you can taste it for 
a long time. Like it's still there, like sitting on your tongue because you can taste like the oils. It just, yeah, exactly. That's my, that's my Lodge Think Emo. You need both though, like that. It can be relaxing times, thinking times. So when you, again, when you talk about a peated whiskey, which is what darkest winter is, the barley has been dried over over peat. The peat is burnt. The smoke rises. The heat rises. That that smoke from the peat infuses into the malted barley, and then that is ground up. And that's what you add to water and yeast. You put in a in a um, in a wash back, and it sits there and it and it starts fermenting the sugars. Uh, but because it was smoked, you get that flavor through. Now the difference, um, and MJ probably knows this as well as I do, is that when you talk about really peaty whiskies, normally you're talking about Isla, which is in Scotland, it's an island. It's literally, uh, you know, sitting in the middle of the ocean. I guess that's what islands do, but you know, like on all sides, it's surrounded by water and water, the salt water impacts everything you do there. So if you're getting peat from the ground, on Isla, it's probably been underwater at some point, under salt water. Excuse me. And you can taste that in the peat. That's why you get that really salty, peaty flavor when when they burn it. But here, um, this is from 400 year old red tingle trees, which are, um, are they cedar trees? They're from the Valley of the Giants. So this is entirely different. This isn't sitting on the coast with the salt water. This is an entirely different type of peat. So you get it's almost like a caramel or vanilla flavor. Yeah, but you get what I mean, Mike. It's like literally, it's a small island. It's like your your Animal Crossing island. When there's like, you can literally look anywhere in this water as opposed to Australia, the island where uh, you can be at Uluru and you probably can't see the ocean, right? Same thing. Have you heard of our Lord and Savior of the Isle of Isla? I don't even know if that's a, a meme, but if there was such a person, I'd be interested in meeting them. Let's see if I can see what Jim Murray said about this whiskey. Because he describes it better than I will. Because I don't know what I'm describing. Let me, let me check the book itself. We'll just do that. By the way, if you didn't pick up a pair of uh, Overwatch League jogging pants when they were on sale for 12 bucks a pop, you missed out because they are great. Uh, so this is the book I was talking about before, Whiskey Bible. This is 2019. He always does this creepy thing. You can see his face in the in the glass. It's always really weird. Spitfire pants. Yeah, exactly right. Um, these are actually so comfy, Mike, and they're twelve bucks each. Twelve dollars a pop. Best money I've ever spent. Hard to replace. Um, so if you go through, he like lists it out by uh, region or um, by you know type of whiskey, whether it's um. Whether it's blended, whether it's, you know, single malt and gives you a, a, a bunch of different ways to uh, look at it. Let's take a look. We can find the, the Aussie whiskey. So here's Lime Burners. There you go. It looks like almost a dictionary. 
uh, Lime Burners, Darkest Winter. So he gave M348, which was the, the cask, um, a 96.5 out of 100, which is actually incredibly good. Uh, X Bourbon, American Oak Cask. <laughs> he says, whatever you do, don't add water. You'll absolutely wreck the intricate oils which set this whiskey apart and makes this fabulous malt tick as well as ensuring a rougher ride. Um, well, there you go. He, he lists, there's a bunch in here under Lime Burners. Uh, the American Oaks, an 86. The director's cut that he had, the port cask, was a 95. The Heavy Peak, 94 and a half. The port cask was 88. Uh, and the sherry cask was 91.5. Uh, and these are all at, at cask strength, by the way. So not the, the 41% that we were looking at before. So he says don't add uh, add water. You can definitely add water if you want to. It's your bottle. If you have a whole bottle, just try it however you want. I don't add water. I'd rather not. It's hard. It's like almost got like a vanilla... Or a caramel in it, which is kind of crazy for a peated whiskey. But that's why Aussie peated whiskies, if we if they peat the malt, if they peat the barley in Australia, then it's uh yeah, it's much better. I find uh, this other one I've got is the uh, director's cut. This was a uh, a musket cask now. Someone who's not me uh, might also know what a musket cask is. Um, it's like... Is it like Australian red wine? Like a, a sherry almost? Oh, hello Inferno. Good to see you here, sir. Raise a glass to you. Uh, but of course, not every time someone redeems raise a glass. Only when we choose to. Uh, is not obligatory and not against terms of service. Mm. But this is very good. True that. Very responsible. So musket is a type of fortified wine. Uh, so there you go. So uh, I think it's... Uh, is it something... It's definitely something that we do here in Australia. Anyway, that's what this is. So this is... Uh, uh, they've gone. They put a um, fortified wine cask. Whiskey into a cask that used to have fortified wine. Leave it in there. And uh, this is obviously uh, what they consider the best of the bunch. So if you go through and you do buy one of their director's cuts, uh, it's more expensive, but theoretically it's uh, one of the better single casks. What would you pair the one you are having at the moment? Snacks or no snacks? I actually always think snacks are good, but it's tough to find the right snack, right? I think something where you can go back and... Clear your, clear your palate and then have another drink and then clear your palate and then have another drink is is the best way to do it. Because otherwise you're not essentially saturating the same flavors, right? That's my theory. Any go-to snacks? I don't mind a bit of cheese. Um, if you go to the... Um, the Yamazaki or... Akushu gift shop. They sell um, like peanuts and chocolate and like smoked uh, ham or something. But they use like whiskey barrel wood chips to, to smoke it. It's actually fantastic. It's actually so good. But even just peanuts I think are pretty good. Yeah. So musket cask, musket, as we just learned, was that uh, fortified wine. So you know that's going to be like a really sweet. If you've ever had like a port or a sherry, uh, you know that they're like, it's a really strong flavor, quite a sweet flavor. Um, and then, woof, yeah. It really adds that to your whiskey. So obviously the barrel's empty when they put the whiskey in, but the there's a lot in, in, the, in the oak that seeps back out into the whiskey. And that's where you get the 
colors from, from the timber, and from obviously what's been uh, sitting in there beforehand. So this one's like, what, 61%? Uh, you can't get it anymore, but you can get uh, you can get other ones. So the current directed, uh, director's cut is the peated cherry cask, which is this one. Seems to have won a ton of awards. Looks great. 61%. Yeah. When you come over, uh, Elson, you should try it. It's actually very good. I feel like I've only ever... Had, had whiskey at yours? Back in the day, before I had anything good. And uh, I drank half of what you had. So... Mm. Yeah, you can very it it tastes a little bit like fortified wine, but super sweet. Payback time, exactly right. Payback time. But yeah, that's uh that's uh whiskey Wednesdays about lime burners. Um, they have heaps to pick from. A great. Uh, Aussie Distillery. They also, uh, if we go to the shop, they have gins, they have other stuff. They even have hand sanitizer at the moment, by the way. Uh, funnily enough. Yes, I'm over the legal drinking age, so if you like gin, uh, they, they have their own uh, gin collection. They also have... Um, Tiger Snake. Uh, let's have a look at that one. So there you go. Tiger Snake Whiskey with an EY. So this is a blended whiskey. It's got grain in it by the looks of things. Like obviously, but I'm not sure whether it's blended as in blended with malt or just grain. Uh... Corn, rye, malted barley, and uh, occasionally including the old hybrid grain. Tr uh, is that triticale? Triticale? I've never heard of it before. There you go. All from WA. Um, so there you go. If you're into bourbon, this is obviously not bourbon, but uh, if you want to give it a, a go, I've never tried it. Uh, it sounds pretty cool. Uh, there you go. So, you bought two bottles of the hand sanitizer. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's really awesome that they were doing that. Um, there were a ton of distilleries uh, around Oz who were doing the same thing, I guess, around the world. Makes perfect sense. Um, but it was a really cool way to, uh, to support uh, at the time. So, yeah, if you're looking to buy... So, if you want to buy uh, any of these whiskeys from, uh, from them... Obviously, you can go straight to their distillery shop. Uh, just Google Lime Burners. It'll come up as like distillery.com.au. Um, and you can buy from them. When I bought from them, it probably took like two weeks to get here. Like, to be fair, it's coming from Perth um, or WA somewhere. So, you know, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, if you want it quicker, you can buy it from like a Dan Murphy's or... Uh, Nick's wine merch and just keep in mind that if you're wanting to buy uh, a particular cask so if you are looking for like the 2020 release of Darkest Winter you may not be able to get the 2020 release from uh, a normal bottle shop um, even if they were stocking it. it might be last year's it might be the year before's it just really depends you can tell from um, the the cask number which is on the bottle um, so if you go in, you can see. If you go online, hopefully they will tell you uh, what the what the barrel is. This, you can see it right there on this one. This says barrel M485. If you compare it uh, to what's for sale on the distillery website, you'll see what they're selling because they will have as well uh, what uh, what theirs is. You can see there, current barrel, M335, etc. So you just match it up if you want to buy it from somewhere else. Otherwise, buy from the distillery. It means they get more money. Takes a little bit longer, but it's it's obviously supporting them, uh, which is a, a super awesome thing to do. Um, so if you can 
be patient and wait, then that's good, and you should do it. Otherwise, yeah, just pick it up. Um, also, maybe uh, see if you can try the the um, Darkest Winter whiskey tasting that's uh, tickets are on sale at the moment. Um, who's uh, who's the real Inferno chit chatting to? Are you Australian, yeah, man? Sure, I am an Aussie. We're talking about Aussie uh, Aussie whiskey today, Malaysia. I feel like Malaysia has a a pretty big uh, whiskey scene. Thanks, Elson. I am answering chit chit, mate. I'm answering chit. Um, I always feel like there is um a, a decent whiskey scene in Malaysia, um, but uh, a lot of uh like if you go to a bar, um, across Asia in general, a lot of the time you will buy a whole bottle instead of uh, a nip, instead of thirty mils, um. So, and that's sort of the thing. So you go in and you'll buy a bottle, but you don't have to drink it all that night. They'll hold it onto it for you and you can come back um, and you can ask for your bottle again and they'll give it to you and then you pour it out, blah, 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 blah. But the whole premise being that if you've uh, you've bought a bottle, you know, you open it, it's uh, no one's filled it up with water or, or some other sort of whiskey that's not the one you bought. And it's a good, like a business thing, right? If you go for a business meeting, um, you invite someone along and you're like, oh, have here, would you like some whiskey? I've got some you share uh, from the bottle that you bought previously and it's like a nice thing to do. So, um, yeah, it, it, it kind of makes sense. But um, when you're on holidays in Malaysia, it's uh, less good of a deal because I probably don't need a, a whole bottle of whatever from the uh, hotel whiskey, uh, whiskey bar. So... Uh, El Gorilla says, what is your opinion on airport whiskey? What I mean is travel, retail, travel exclusive whiskey that can only be bought at tax-free shops like airports, cruises, etc. In general, is the quality similar or worse to whiskey that is sold normally? Uh, so, it's actually a little from column A and a little from column B. So, I find that the way... Uh, that it works is that they will want to charge you the same amount. So I'll take Australia for example. Uh, I know that I can go and buy um, a bottle of something. Say say a bottle is ninety dollars in Australia of whatever. So take Ardberg for example. Ardberg is a whiskey I really like. Um, ninety dollars for seven hundred milliliters in Australia from a normal bottle shop. If I go to the airport and I buy it duty free, it'll also be ninety dollars, but it will be a uh, thousand milliliters. It'll be one liter instead of seven hundred mil. So they're still they're trying to take the same amount of money from you. They just give you more for it. So that's one way that they'll play it. That you'll get a good deal, um, but maybe you need to spend the same amount of money, or they'll offer you two bottles for the price of one and a half. So you'll get. Two bottles of Johnny Walker Red Label uh, for the price of of what it would normally cost you for one and a half bottles in Australia. So you can you can find value that way if you're buying the exact same whiskey, you're just getting more of it. You're paying probably the same amount as if you bought a bottle, but you're just getting more whiskey in the bottle. So that's a good deal. I like that one. Uh, the other ones they'll do are travel exclusive. So uh, they will be the whiskey that you know but it will be slightly different. So uh, Hibiki will release uh, uh, a, a special version that's called something else that maybe is just a little bit different, um, but you can only buy it at Duty Free. They'll also go out and they'll release um, special bottlings where the bottles look different. They're really cool artwork, but they cost twice the price. But the what's in the bottle is the same. Um, Johnny Walker does a lot of like uh, different mixed bottling so they'll take like green label that you know and they'll say this green label actually has different contents to the normal green label and they do like a johnny walker island green um which is a p tier version of green label so quite often they'll try and charge the same in that regard by something that's slightly different and that you can only buy at duty free so you'll pay you know a great bottle of green label might be 70 dollars in australia you go to duty free, you'll get, uh, you pay 70 bucks, you'll get a litre instead of 700 mils, and it'll be different. So that's kind of the way that they play it. Yeah. There you go. Harmony. Hibiki Harmony Master Select is the, uh, is the travel edition. 
So that's how it plays out. So overall, it's not that bad, uh, but you kind of need to know what you're looking for. Like if you want to go in and you just want to buy a bottle of Johnny Walker Red Label, you'll get a great deal. You walk out, uh, you'll buy two one liter bottles and you've almost hit your two point uh, two five liter limit and you, you're Gucci. Um, if you're not sure what you want, um, then you might need to do your research because there could be some weird version of Black Label in there that you're like, I don't even know if this is the one that I want. Um, yeah, so it really just depends. And the more you go, more you get to travel, obviously, the more you can buy that. I'll normally come back and I'll buy like an Aardberg uh, for a liter. Might get the Johnny Walker Island Green because I like it. It's like Green Label, but it's a better version of Green Label and it's a liter instead of 700 mils. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, so normally it's okay. Normally it's not... Certainly not often a worse deal. It's just not always an amazing deal. Not like perhaps it was, you know, 10 years ago, perhaps. Um, duty free is the strangest idea. Yeah, it particularly, uh, like I'll go through Fishy. Like if I go through Sydney Airport, I will see what's there uh, on the way through, but I won't buy. And then I'll go on my trip and I'll see what's obviously at the airport on the other side. Um, Normally, your best value is buying overseas. If you're in Australia, normally your best value is buying overseas because Australian duty is exorbitant. It's insane. Um, so again, if you're, I'm in Japan, I might go to like a big camera, which is like an electronic store, and I'll go through and I'll buy a bunch of even Scotch whiskey that you can get in Australia, but it's just like half the price, and they'll do it tax-free. So you don't pay Japanese tax. They put it in your little thing, and you put it in your suitcase, and you take it with you. Um, and you just make sure you don't go over your 2.25 litres of pop. Uh, yeah, but that, that's about how it plays out. Also, you can get a litre of Toki uh, for 70 bucks or 60 bucks, which is a good deal if you like Toki. Uh, Ferno says, I've got a great uh, Oban, duty-free, 14-year-old. Yeah, uh, good example is Cavalan. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, you can normally get like your pretty basic things... Um, Always better to buy overseas normally than Australia. But if you get back to Australia and you haven't used up your allowance, then you'd use it. Um, and it, it just always depends. Because there'll be plenty of um, duty frees on the way out of other countries that actually just don't have anything. They just don't have anything that you want. Um, which is kind of shame. Yeah, El Gorilla, I... Look, it's, it's a bit... For, like, if you're literally buying the exact same whiskey, it's going to be a better deal. If you're buying a travel exclusive, it is a little bit... Um, you know, something special for the sake of being special, but um, give it a burl. Normally, they're not that different. For me, the Johnny Green I liked more because it's, it literally had more uh, Peter Whiskey, which is what I wanted. Um, so you just got to, you know, check the reviews and stuff like that. Um, but if you if you want to be safe, just buy the same whiskey you always buy. You just get more of it. Um, but Aussie Duty Free is never that great a deal, unfortunately. Um Yeah, so that's it. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Duty free. Haven't uh, experienced that for a while. We did our Mel and I came back from Japan in uh, end of March and brought back the old four and a half liters. Um, I think it's all gone. Not all of it, I guess. The the Nika that I bought, I've still got. Uh, I think that was like fifty dollars a bottle in Japan instead of a hundred and thirty dollars a bottle here in Australia. So that's not so bad, uh, but. Again, it's pretty expensive to go overseas to buy whiskey to bring back. It's not a good good plan. 